you're not good enough at ultrasound, that's not an excuse to punish your patients with radiation. Get out there, ultrasounds, hearts, lungs, my VCs, let us know how you feel about it. He you know, got his wrist pain by, by doing over aggressive high fives to his buddies. <laughs> it's showtime. Hi everybody, you're listening to the Emergency Ultrasound Podcast. Today we're going to talk about ultrasound for appendicitis. Mike, you ever see uh, appendicitis in the emergency department? Uh, appendicitis, that's the thing we usually treat with radiation, right? Uh, well, it would seem that way. I mean, it does seem like we get a CT scan for every case of appendicitis, but actually the title of this podcast is Radiation Isn't Going to Cure That Appendicitis. We're going to talk about ultrasound and why you really should be going to ultrasound first uh, in a workup of appendicitis. So, let me tell you a story. This is a guy that a story about a guy that I saw a few months ago in the emergency department, 20-year-old who came in complaining of right lower quadrant pain. So obviously we're thinking about appendicitis, except that I actually recognized this patient. He was a patient that one of my partners had seen. The patient was leaving the emergency department when I first came in, and then he came back to see me. Uh, my partner told me about the guy as he was leaving. He said, this guy doesn't have anything. Uh, he's probably seeking pain medication. And you may not have any of those patients in your ED, but we occasionally see one or two. And this guy kind of fit the bill. He kind of looked like somebody who was going to have that. You know, I do get paid to do history and physical, though, and I'm kind of expected to see the patient, so I went in and saw him anyway. We already knew that he had nothing, but I thought I'd see him. Yeah, why'd you bother? Well, um, I mean, there were nurses around, techs around. Oh, yeah, you got to make it look good. Yeah, exactly. So just to be clear, Mike and I do believe in the physical exam. However, after years of hearing about the superiority of our previous generation's physical exam skills, sometimes we like to play along and act like we skipped the physical exam or an ultrasound. I mean, our point, I think, is that why stop with palpation, percussion, listening, and tasting the urine when you can actually look inside the body with ultrasound? That's our point. We do do a physical exam. So I went in. The guy told me that, that he started having the pain the day before, it was a little worse with eating, but he was still hungry. Hungry? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't be hungry if you have appendicitis, right? Right. No, I already told you. He didn't have appendicitis. He was yeah. fine. Okay. So no vomiting, diarrhea, or fever. You can see he was afebrile, 36.4. Vital signs are normal. He kind of was hurting all over his oppressed, maybe a little worse than the lower quadrant, but pretty unimpressive. Um, I was convinced. And this guy also, he had the kind of... Uh, uh, the tattoo sign. He had more than 20 tattoos or a neck tattoo. That's the rule. And he actually had both of these. So he obviously didn't have any real pathology. So what do you do? What do you do in this case? What would you do, Mike? You're going to repeat his labs or three hours old? You're going to CT him? This is the second trip. Well, if I think about the conversation I'm going to have with the surgeon on the phone, it's probably going to be get a CT and repeat some labs. <laughs> so okay. What I guess about, I would get a CT and repeat some laughs. What about you yourself? What would you do? I mean, Oh, so I'm not supposed to just do whatever my consultants want me to do? No. I mean, that's you could do that. That's one way to go about it. But we're going to try to practice a little better than that. Uh, okay, that so, sounds awesome. Yeah. So I, I, what I decided to do is uh, actually observe this guy and re-examine him. I took the easy way out. I, I didn't just kind of man up and say, hey, you've got nothing. Go home. What a little weenie. Um, I would, didn't. I was a little more scared than that, so I decided to observe him, repeat his labs. Now that would give me a couple hours to watch him, see if his pain got better. If it wasn't any worse than it was at first, I was going to send him home. You know what? I take that weenie statement back. I think observing and re-examining is somewhat of a lost art with it being so easy to get a CT scan, but I think it's a very valid technique, uh, and I think sometimes time is the best diagnostic test. Um, I did have an ultrasound machine in the department and that's what I do so I saw an ultrasound him also not because I really thought he had it but it was just kind of another thing to say hey look I did something else for you um, you're fine go home quit complaining quit coming Smooth. here for pain medications thanks so this is what I found this is a beautiful appendicitis you see you see the iliac artery pulsating there and just beside it you see this big non compressible 10 millimeter appendix. So this was really nice. I called the surgeon who was just down the hall. He came, looked at the ultrasound, examined the patient, took him to the OR. No labs, nothing. It was really nice. A uh, very fulfilling case, uh, although I did feel pretty bad because I thought the guy was a drug seeker, um, but he proved me wrong and he had some real pathology. 
So I hope that nobody out there changes their practice based on a story like this, though. Um, this was uh, a, a story that I'll always remember, and I'll probably practice it a little differently because of it, but we really shouldn't. We really should base what we do on the evidence. So, Mike, any idea what the sensitivity of ultrasound for appendicitis is? Oh, man, I hate it when you pimp me on air. I guess I'm going to go with how about 73 to 94 percent. Uh, not even close. I met some dumb bastards in my time, but you outdo them all. 72 to 95 percent, depending <sighs> on the study. Uh, that's a pretty big range, though. Y any idea why? Yeah, why is it so big? Well, a few things. So first off, it seems like we kind of stink in the U.S. at ultrasound for appendicitis, and they're really good in Europe. So where the study was performed makes a big difference. The biggest factor really is the, the age of the study. That 72 number is really not fair. That, that was studies done uh, 30 or more years ago with these kind of machines, these dinosaur machines that you can see here um, on the left. Now the, the other machine you see here, the brand new machine, this is actually the machine that I used in our emergency department uh, and it gives great images. So when the study was done is probably the biggest factor. And then another factor is your patient size. I think everybody understands that you use ultrasound at this point that how big the patient is makes a big difference. So, okay, but does that mean they're patients that I shouldn't try to use the ultrasound with because they're too big? Like, how big is too big? Yeah, that's a good question. And, I, and I mean, how big is too big? <laughs> that's, I think that's probably kind of hard to study. However, I did find one study on this, uh, and it was a study in the Journal of Pediatrics just published this year. Uh, and what they found was if you had a BMI greater than 85% of normal, then the diagnostic accuracy of ultrasound was unacceptable. So those really big patients, it just you, you couldn't use. Now, now what diagnostic accuracy, that arbitrary level that they say was good enough and not good enough, you can read the article and decide for yourself. But that's kind of a general ball pop park number and a little bit evidence-based. Great. So before I ultrasound anybody for appendicitis, you want me to calculate their BMI and then figure out if it's greater than 85% of normal? Well, I know you hate numbers, Mike, so I did find actually one other study uh, for you. Uh, this was a study, uh, I'm not sure about the methods of this study, I'm not sure how good it was, but basically they said, you know what, if your patient is so fat, their neck looks like a pack of hot dogs, then you probably uh, should go straight to CT. Sounds good. So let's talk about the geography a little bit. Um, I told you that we kind of stink in the U.S. Um, however, uh, we don't stink that bad. This is a a review published in the Annals of Internal Medicine on uh, ultra CT and ultrasound to look at uh, sensitivity in adult and adolescent patients, and they included 26 studies uh, between 1966 and 2003 and found a sensitivity of 86 percent. That's not bad, that's right? That's not bad, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And what you, I think the most important thing to realize about the study, too, is you can see that uh, in 1966, they included studies from 1966. Wow. Did so they even have ultrasounds back then? I guess they did. Apparently they did. But th that's obviously going to skew this quite a bit. You probably put somebody like a big vat of water and just hit it from the side with a hammer <laughs> or something. Yeah, pro <laughs> that's probably <laughs> how they did it. Um yeah, so so this 86% number I think is not really all that fair. But even that, I mean, even at that, I think that's better than what a lot of people, a lot of people thought that the actual number was going to be, um, especially in the U.S. In the rest of the world, uh, I told you we're a little bit better. This is a brand new study, 2010, um, uh, looking at looking at evaluation of appendicitis with ultrasound, and they found a negative predictive value of 95%. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Uh, I mean, this kind of makes you wonder why we're using CT if it's that good. However, this is a negative predictive value. This is a a uh, a, a retrospective study that it, we're not really talking about sensitivity, which we've been talking about, and we like that number a little yeah, better. It'd be nice to have a pro prospective study <laughs> kind of this stuff. Uh, well, I'm glad you said that, Mike, because actually there was a prospective study recently. In Europe, now I don't know how you feel about the European. Actually, I do know you hate Europeans, <laughs> right, Mike? But this was a this was a pretty good study. 942 patients, and they found sensitivity of 92 percent for ultrasound. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, leave it to the Europeans. They're better at everything. 
Well, not everything. We we crush them at most things, but soccer. ultrasound. They're definitely better at soccer. That doesn't. That's not. That doesn't count. It's not it's a real not sport. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So ninety-two percent. I mean, then you got to kind of wonder, why do we CT at all? I mean, are there any patients that we should go straight to CT for? And I think there really there are. I think we should probably talk about. I mean, we already talked about the limitations uh, of of ultrasound, and the biggest one is when the patient is really, really fat. I mean, this guy that you see here, you're not going to find his appendix with ultrasound. Um, and the other one is when the operator is too inexperienced. We talked about in the U.S. as being not quite as good, and that's just a, it's not because we're not as smart, it's just because we don't do it as much. We haven't done it as much. And so this really is an operator-dependent study. And so if your radiologist isn't as good at doing it, then the sensitivity probably isn't going to be quite as high. It's going to be this it's 92%. Okay, so I need to think about CT in cases when I've got people that are just too big to get a good image, or if I just don't know what I'm doing, or my radiologist doesn't know what they're doing with the ultrasound. Y yes, but um, I I said this, that operator, if the operator is inexperienced, you may want to go straight to CT, but I actually don't believe that. Um, and the reason why I say that is because if your radiologist stinks at ultrasound, that's not an excuse to punish your patients with radiation. Yeah, the only way they're going to get better is if they do it. Exactly. So I say you got to order it. I mean, you, you got to kind of say, this is your job to do the right thing for the patient. If you don't, if you're not good enough at ultrasound of, of the appendix, then you need to get good enough because other people are. But at the very least, those are two cases when I can't trust my ultrasound as much. I can't trust that negative predictive value or that sensitivity as much as as much as I could if it were the cases were separate, different. Yeah, exactly. Okay, you're exactly right. So, so when should I ultrasound all the time? When should I just like like gut reaction, check the ultrasound box, and send the patient off for an ultrasound rather than CT. Yeah, so that's a, so. When should you fight the radiologist right. really instead of kind of giving in? Well, I think the most important times are um, when you have kids and sensitive organs. I think everybody understands this, and pregnant patients. Uh, however, <laughs> you like the picture there, Mike? If uh, this was actually is that a guy you? that <laughs> it's not. This is the. The guy who was pregnant on Oprah. I know you're a big Oprah fan, oh, so yeah, I, love Oprah. I figured that you had seen this. But anyway, uh, I don't want you to trust me. That in the recent surgical clinics of North America, in their update on imaging for acute appendicitis, they stress in that recent publication that ultrasound is particularly useful in children and pregnant women. This is an obvious thing, but I think we should kind of say it. Um, now, children and pregnant patients, you really should fight your radiologist to get that ultrasound. Um, but to me, I really think that even in normal-sized adult patients, you're going to save time, money, and radiation in most cases. So we should be going to ultrasound first in, in everybody. Uh, there was a nice um, article showing that if we went to ultrasound first, a strategy we save about $21.8 million annually. And That kind of sounds like... Chump change when it comes to the national health care. Yeah, no, cost. I mean, uh, the Department of Defense probably spends more than that on Chinese handcuffs <laughs> a year, so it's probably uh, not a lot of money. And and you may be like uh, uh, Jay Z, and you may say, you know what, to me, money ain't a thing. But I would argue that even if money ain't a thing to you, the radiation is a thing. And that's really the biggest cost. We talk about cost. And we think of money a lot of times, but the main cost of going straight to CT is the radiation. I mean, what, what's what's the numbers? It's like one in, uh, it's one in... It's one in too much. I mean, it freaks me out, you know. Yeah. Every time you send a patient off to a CT, I'm sort of thinking in the back of my head, I'm, I'm sort of doing that cost-benefit analysis, you know. Is it really worth giving them that one in 1,000 or one in 2,000 risk of cancer 20 years down the road? Is my pretest probability that high? Right. It's yeah. It's scary. Yeah, we don't know what the yeah, exact number is, but it's but it's too high. And when you think about the fact that we see 500,000 appendicitis cases a, a year in the U.S., um, and ultrasound first would save literally hundreds of thousands of CTs. That's that's a lot of lives saved. That's that's a big difference that we could be making right now. Um, and 92% sensitivity. I mean, that's pretty good. Now, I think everybody understands though that CT scanning. It may be slightly more sensitive, but if we are going to expose that many patients to radiation, it better be a lot more sensitive. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. What's the number? How much more sensitive does it have to be? I mean, can you get 
much more sensitive than than 92 percent or 90, 91 percent, whatever it is. Well, let's look real quick at that question. So this is a, a review in a, in the Annals of Emergency Medicine, uh, looking at CT scanning. What they found, I and mean, this is a, in 2010, so this is our best CT scanners. We really shouldn't be comparing this study to the old studies of ultrasound. We should be comparing it to the new studies of ultrasound. But look at the sensitivity, 92.7%. And what was our ultrasound sensitivity in the newer studies? Yeah, it was like 91, 92 in the European studies. Exactly. So it's the same. I mean, th this is like possibly a tiny statistical, st statistically significant difference, but not enough to expose patients to radiation. I mean, I guess, I guess people should make their own decision about that. But to me, at least, that is not enough to go to be CTing these patients. I gotta say, Matt, that blows my mind. The idea that only it's only 92.7% sensitive. I mean, I've always sort of thought of CT and appendicitis as like the gold standard, the 100%, you know, the 99%. Like one of those things where you get it and it's negative and you're done. Yeah, you send the home. Yeah. But that 92 makes me, that gives me some pause. Yeah, no, it does. I mean, and I, you know, I, I actually had a case not that long ago um, where I did an ultrasound for a patient and it looked like they had appendicitis and I was at a place that didn't trust the ultrasound as much and the surgeon demanded a CT scan. We did the CT scan and it was normal and so the surgeon wanted to send the patient home. Um, they hadn't came in to see the patient and they weren't going to because they were in the next city over. This was in a rural area and the, he still hurt. He was a 16 year old kid, had a right lower quadrant pain. I saw him at the beginning of my shift. It was a 12 hour shift and it was only in his right lower quadrant. I was sure he had appendicitis. It looked like an ultrasound, but the CT was negative. Um, so, so this guy had a positive ultrasound and a negative CT. Yes. Now, I say positive ultrasound. It was my ultrasound. This was at night. It was okay. not a radiology-performed ultrasound, but it looked like it to me. Um, and I, my sensitivity is not as good as, as a radiologist because so I've not do? done as many. So I couldn't send him home. He still hurt. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry to interrupt. But it's kind of a pet peeve of mine when people interchange the word sensitivity and specificity, and this Dawson character just did it. So by saying that his sensitivity is not as good as a radiologist's sensitivity for appendicitis with ultrasound, he is correct. However, what he meant to say there was specificity. So I apologize, a very unnecessary and very nerdy interruption, but I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. So I kept him all night in the emergency department for 12 hours. I would go check on him. He would be sleeping, and I would could touch his stomach, and he was fine until I touched his right lower quadrant, and he would wake up. So it was, I mean, I just could not send this guy home. Finally, in the morning, when he didn't get any better, I called the, the surgeon and kind of demanded they see it. It wasn't demanding, but I said, what am I going to do? I can't send this guy home. Um, he came in and saw the patient finally. Uh, they took him to the OR, and he had appendicitis. So it was, it was the first case that I had ever seen where the CT was negative and the patient had appendicitis. Uh, well, that's not true. It was the first case that I had kept and not discharged. That had <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you've sent plenty of people home with appendicitis. Well, sure. I mean, how many, all have. how many patients have you seen with appendicitis? If it, it, sensitivity is 92.7. Yeah. If you've seen more than 12, then Chances probably are you've had a negative CT and a positive appendicitis. That's Ex crazy. Exactly. So, so, so what do we do with this? I mean, I've got a CT that's pretty good at diagnosing appendicitis, and I've got ultrasound, which is pretty good at diagnosing appendicitis. Like, what's, this, what's, the, what's the algorithm? So there is a great article in the World Journal of Surgery, just published last year. Uh, it's entitled Routine Ultrasound and Limited CT for the Diagnosis of Acute Appendicitis. Nice title. You kind of know where they're going with this. And that's it. they ultrasounded everybody first. Uh, let me show you their algorithm, because this is something that I think we could apply to our patients. It's very simple and it worked incredibly. So they thought maybe appendicitis, ultrasound. If positive, surgery. The specificity is, is pretty much just as high as CT. So you can take these patients to the OR if it's on ultrasound. Sensitivity, the specificity is like 95%. If it's negative, then they re-examine the patient. I mean, sensitivity is 92%, right? So it's pretty good. It, close to being able to rule out appendicitis. Mm -hmm. But they re-examine them. If they're better, they observe them and send them home. If they're worse, then they CT scan them. So that's only after a negative ultrasound and the patient not getting better with observation. And what did they find? Look at these results. This is incredible. So what percentage of patients do you think that we normally CT in the, in the U.S. emergency department when we think they have appendicitis? A lot. 
Yeah, pretty pretty <laughs> much all of them. Way more than 17%. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So they only CT 17% of the patients. That's an incredible amount of radiation they saved. The negative predictive value of ultrasound was 97%. Man, that's nuts. Yeah. That's so good. And and the question here is, well, if they're doing ultrasound and then going to the OR with it, are you having a bunch of, of negative flaps? And the answer was no, absolutely not, 3%. So this is these are incredible numbers. This is a big study. This gives us a very clear outline of how we should go about evaluating these patients when we think they have appendicitis. So that leads us to a quotable quote. Ultrasound is the single greatest thing to happen to man since the image of Low Calorie Ranch. It has the potential to make every medical encounter more satisfying, more gratifying, and all around better. You'll be glad you did. Two thumbs up. This is from the journal of email sent to me by Mike Mallon. Uh, and uh, I mean, I include this kind of facetiously as we've been kind of ramping up, so showing how awesome ultrasound is, and this kind of seems like the conclusion to that. But um, we we don't actually think that ultrasound makes every medical encounter better. Uh, one time, I had an encounter that wasn't improved by ultrasound, so not every time. Yeah, there was that time that it was sort of like halfway improved for me. <laughs> yeah, so we're obviously a little biased. Um, and we are putting some of our opinion in here, but we're also I mean, we're giving you the numbers. These are th this is not stuff that we've made up. Oh, well, except for the uh, uh, your patient so fat article and this article. But other than that, these are actually real. <laughs> everything else is true. Yeah, everything else is true. Um, as long as we didn't ruin our credibility with those two things, everything else is true. These are the real numbers. Okay, so I generally agree with most things that the person just talking was saying because that person is me. However, um, I've got a pause here. Uh, this is, seems sim somewhat disingenuous to me to say that we're just giving you the numbers. Um, we're giving you snippets of the numbers and just some statistics uh, from cases. Uh, and I think it was Mark Twain that said there were three types of lies, lies, damned lies, and statistics. So anybody that ever just gives you snippets uh, of statistics you should never trust uh, and that's what we don't want you to just trust us blindly we want you to go and read this literature and decide for yourself what we're telling you really is what we believe um, however this is not meant to be a complete evidence-based review of all of this literature that's up to you to do we're not going to be able to spoon feed you that in a 30-minute podcast so I'm sorry if that seemed like a little overstretched uh, that statement about here's the numbers this is the truth uh, take it and do it uh, but really, this is just basically our opinion and what we believe. Uh, you should definitely read the literature and make some decisions for yourself. Um, one thing that is important to mention, though, this is mainly this is a podcast about ultrasound performed point of care by emergency physicians, and we've been talking mainly about radiology performed ultrasound. So I think it's what is our sensitivity? I mean, these are not the numbers for me performing it. I've been kind of mixing it up, telling you about me performing ultrasound for appendicitis and then talking about radiology numbers. Well, there are a couple studies on point-of-care ultrasound for appendicitis. One was in the World Journal of Surgery, 1998. 191 patients, these are surgeons who thought a patient may have appendicitis and then ultrasounded them prior to surgery. And their sensitivity was okay, 99.3%. That's a load of crap. <laughs> yeah. Now this, So I do not be believe this. I don't believe that uh, these surgeons in Taiwan in 1998 were 99. 191 <laughs> patients, 99.3% sensitivity. That's, they missed like one. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, if you, I, I guess if you look at the specificity of this paper, 61, 68%. Basically, it looks like they're just everybody who they thought had appendicitis clinically. They all sounded and said, "Oh, yep, appendicitis," and they just called it, and they were very non-specific at all. Um, and I don't know. I mean, there's obviously going to be some flaws with this paper. If I had an attention span more than 30 seconds, I would have read the whole paper. Um, but that's what Jerry Hoffman does. That's, that's for him to do. Um, <laughs> I just uh, blindly uh, give you the numbers. No, uh, no, we, we review these articles. Uh, just kidding. All right, so that, so that one's crap. So <laughs> is there anything decent that says uh, how good we are at, as emergency physicians? Well, there's one other study, uh, and it was a study uh, by Chris Foxy Fox. Uh, UC Irvine looking at emergency physicians, not surgeons, performing the scan, and they found a sensitivity of 65% and specificity of 90%. So that's not all that encouraging, at least for me doing them, because I mean, I can't rule out appendicitis with a sensitivity of 
Um, but I've but kind of a, 90 is pretty good. I mean, you can rule it in. Yeah, no, that's a that's a pretty good specificity. Um, and so yeah, and I think that's and this is, I think what we do. Most emergency physicians don't use this to rule out appendicitis, but instead rule it in. And to be fair too, this was, uh, I mean, Chris Fox. He's probably even. I mean, he didn't do all of these studies. It was his group. But they're probably even better now. This was done in 2008, so the time that they actually performed the scans was probably a year or two, a couple of years leading up to that. So we have better technology. We've been doing this more, and it, we're probably getting better. I mean, I really think that uh, this is this study, ultrasound for appendicitis, us doing is where other modalities were 10 years ago. Uh, yeah, I think this is awesome. I mean, I think you can take that 90% number and go go from, you know, is does this patient have appendicitis? And if they do, with your scan, you know, I think you're done. I mean, I think you call the surgeon and you're like, hey, I think this person has appendicitis. They've got an ultrasound in the emergency department performed by me that's that shows they have appendicitis. Take them to the OR. And if not, you know, I mean, we just continue on down that algor algorithm and get other imaging modalities. Yeah, and in the future when we get better at this, like, like I was saying, I think this is like where gallbladder was 10 years ago. We, we've gotten better and better at that. Now we have evidence that we are pretty good. We're, we're really good at that, and we're good enough to rule out IUP. We're good enough to rule out aortic aneurysm. So what he meant to say was rule out ectopic or virtually rule out ectopic heterotopic risk, blah, 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 by ruling in IUP, not ruling out IUP. Sorry for the necessary interruption again. We're good enough to do a lot of things, and I think as we practice this more and the technology gets better and we have more experience, Hopefully we'll get good enough at this, but the only way we'll know and the only way we'll, we may be able to do that is by doing it. So, more Matt, more. you've convinced me. We need to do yes. ultrasounds for appendicitis more often. We need we need to do it. So let's quit talking about all these numbers and tell me how we do it. Okay, fine. So how do you do it? So a couple pretty simple things. You look in the right lower quadrant. You find the iliac artery. That's your landmark. We talk about landmarks where they order it's a spine shadow, things like that. Your iliac artery is the main landmark here. Then you look beside it, and you're going to hopefully find the appendix. When you do find it, what do you do to it? You measure it. If it's greater than 7 millimeters, that's one of the diagnostic criteria. If it's non-compressible, that's the other diagnostic criteria. Now, the other thing uh, to mention that uh, isn't really reported in the literature all that much is does it hurt? I haven't really read much about a sonographic McBurney sign, but I think this is useful and I think it would be useful if it was studied just like a sonographic Murphy sign. If you find the appendix, it looks like appendicitis, and you compress it right there, it should hurt. If it doesn't hurt, then maybe you want to think maybe that's not the appendix or appendicitis. Or if you compress it and it hurts, and there's a patient that hurts everywhere, if you go two centimeters away and they don't hurt, but they do hurt right on the appendix, two centimeters all around, no pain, pain on the appendix, to me that's a pretty good sign. I think that helps me feel a little more comfortable that this is appendicitis. Now, if you're going to create a new sign, you know you can't call it the sonographic Murphy sign or the sonographic McBurney sign. You have to call it the sonographic Dawson sign. Okay, well, one, uh, I don't think my ego is that big, and two, I haven't done a formal review of the literature to see if this is described, so we probably shouldn't be naming any signs after um, either of us okay, right now. Fair, fair enough. So th th I think the way I like to do it is I like to, like you said, look for that iliac artery. Then I'll often try to find the cecum, which is usually sitting somewhere near that iliac artery, and that's usually that large, like, bag of poop is what it looks like on the ultrasound and then you and nice. then I try to find like I try to find a, a you know a tubular structure that's small coming off that cecum and it often lays over the iliac artery um, or right next to it and then I look to make sure that it's got a blind end so I want to make sure I'm not looking at I'm not looking at ilium I want to make sure I'm looking at the appendix and then check and see if it's compressible does it have peristalsis? Any bowel should have peristalsis. The appendix does not peristalsis. So if you sit there and look at it for a while, if it's not squeezing, if it's not moving around, then it's probably probably the appendix. And then, like you said, is it compressible? Is it greater than 7 millimeters? Does it hurt when you press on it? Yeah, all those are great things. Unfortunately, I'm not smart enough to remember more than two things. So I think of it, is it compressible and is it greater than 7 millimeter, millimeters? And then as, uh, as you get better at doing the scan, then you'll be able to do all the subtle things and uh, do the things that Mike talks about and get a lot better. Your sensitivity and specificity will so go So I guess that requires some practice. Yeah, so let's, let, let's practice. Uh, what are we talking about? Yeah, practice, Alan. What? You don't want to practice? practice? Man. Um, okay. We well, 
you're a star, you don't have to practice, but maybe the rest of us are going to practice. So, what about this? This is compressible and it's two millimeters. Is this appendicitis? Wow, you guys are incredible. You are exactly right. This is not appendicitis. So practice number two. This is non-compressible and 12 millimeters. What do you think, Mike? Oh, it's got to be appendicitis. Oh, yes, you're, you're so right. So, I love it when it's easy. Is it compressible? Is it big? Uh, now, we, I said earlier something about this being kind of a simple study. This is not an easy study. If it was, then at UC Irvine, they would have had greater than 65% sensitivity. They're pretty awesome at ultrasound there. Uh, this is, it's, it's not that easy, um, but if you do find this big swollen appendix that's non-compressible, greater than 7 millimeters, then you can probably rule it in. Maybe not rule it out yet. You're probably going to have to practice quite a bit to get your personal sensitivity up to rule it out. And although this is a podcast about ultrasound, I think it is important to at least mention, uh, lastly, when we're talking about appendicitis, that I have seen Gifted Hands, Cuba Gooding Jr., and watched enough episodes of ER to know that you guys out there evaluating appendicitis are awesome at what you do, and we've got plenty of literature saying that, you know, at least in males and in children, diagnostic imaging, specifically CT scanning, doesn't really change our management all that much. If you think a patient has appendicitis, you can call the surgeon and send them to the OR. Or you can do the ultrasound now. In the past, we talked about just doing it clinically because we want to save radiation. Now we've got another tool in our bag to diagnose appendicitis without the radiation. So get out there, do it. Ultrasound, some appendixes, decrease some radiation exposure, make a difference. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. May God have mercy on your soul. If you're not good enough at ultrasound, that's not an excuse to punish your patients with radiation. Get out there, ultrasounds, hearts, lungs, my VCs. Let us know how you feel about it.